Two most famous questions have been asked for two months in a row. What is the most OP companion in a game? And what is the most OP class, or better to say archetype for the main character, for the main rogue trader in the game? I'm well over 1000 hours in a game, I tested every build, every companion, in multiple builds, I tested every item, everything that you can imagine in a game, unfair difficulty. And these would be the best builds for companions and for your main in Rogue Trader, as of the end of January patch in 2024. Things could change, but this is how it is right now. Let's not waste time. Let's go. Are you ready for more Hammer 40k Rogue Trader? Because I am. The Emperor protects. So, let's start with the main Rogue Trader and the first four archetypes available. We got Warrior, Officer, Operative and Soldier. The most OP by far and the most useful one would be the Officer and that will be spot number one. On spot number two it is the Operative or better to say the Boss Killer. On spot number three would be Soldier and the weakest one would be the Warrior. That's for tier 1. Why the officer? Because it gives extra turns, it buffs up the entire team and it can also hurt, depends on what tier 2 archetype you're gonna go for. But officer is the most versatile one, combined with psyker abilities, he can also become a full tank or a full burst squishy that supports companions. Officer is just the best all around archetype and it fits the lore for the rogue trader extremely well. Why is operative number two? Because operative can really destroy tankier enemies. This is the main debuffer in the game and an absolute must is to have at least one operative in your team. Why soldier on number three only the reason is very simple, you don't need soldier's damage, soldier on its own is useless without officer and operative, completely useless, even warrior is more useful than a soldier on its own because a warrior can tank up, can soak up damage while soldier Soldier cannot tank up damage, it cannot soak up damage and it heavily relies on the amount of operatives and officers around the soldier. And why is warrior the weakest one? Even though you can tank but later on after like 30 hours in the game or so you can start soaking up damage. First of all it takes way too long to scale. Second of all, those attacks are very costly and the spells you get to buff yourself up or your allies are also extremely costly and you always need to sacrifice something with a warrior, you can never output the full combo even when playing as a Psyker warrior. They have good Psyker warrior builds like a Pyro warrior, okay, where you can burn all enemies around you and of course the best one would be the Sanctic, yeah. but. As things stand right now, that's how I scale them. Officer, Operative, Soldier and then at the last spot would be the Warrior. Now what about the Psykers? Okay, these would be all of the Origins and those Origins merge well with Archetypes when you wanna play as Dogmatic and so on, so no Psykers. But once you pick up Psyker, there are five Psykers available, okay? Now which one is the most OP? The most OP by far would be the Pyromancer. Now you got my full build for the Pyromancer where I single-handedly kill all enemies in round one on unfair difficulty. Basically you can't do that with every class, very few classes are capable of doing it and Pyromancer is one of those classes, but only if you play Pyromancer as a mage operative, okay? And that would be one of the most OP things in the game. The other OP thing would be the Officer Sanctic, because you get additional buffs from Sanctic on top of all of those buffs from the Officer. 
they merge extremely well. As far as Telepod goes, it's the second best after the Pyromancer, as far as aggressive psychers go. Diviner would be a buffer debuffer psyker, but you got it on Nidira, yeah. And a Biomancer would apply on nearly every single archetype in a game, a bit of buffs, a bit of healing, a bit of revivals, and so on. Utility. So what is the ranking of the Psychers? On a first spot would be the Pyromancer, on a second spot would be the Sanctic, on a third spot it would be the Telepath, on the fourth spot it would be the Biomancer, and the worst out of them all would be the Diviner. But again, every Psyker is good if you apply a good home world and a good origin. Okay, I'm just saying what's most OP, the most OP would be the Pyromancer by far. Same how I say that the officer is the most OP by far. The officer needs to be a Sanctic or a Diviner or a Pyromancer if you go as a tank, while Pyromancer could be an operative or a warrior. So that would be the most OP combos in the game. Now what about tier 2? Out of the Assassin, Vanguard, Bounty Hunter, Master Tactician, Grand Strategist and Arch Militant, what is the most OP second tier Arch type? It is by far the Grand Strategist. The reason is very simple, you always play first. When you have 4 Grand Strategists in your team, all of them will play first, no matter if you trigger the fight first or if it's an ambush, you're gonna play first no matter what. What it means when you play first, it means you can burst out enemies, reduce their numbers and they won't hurt you as much during round 2, but from my personal experience, round 1 is all that it takes to clear the fight with proper builds on unfair, so Grand Strategist is completely broken and by far the best second tier archetype in the game. After the Grand Strategist, it's Master Tactician, also extremely OP, crazy good because you can spam ultis non-stop as a master tactician this is a leader when you have master tactician and grand strategists in your team you have nothing to worry about basically on spot number three i would put assassin assassin can deal tremendous amount of damage with proper builds no matter if it's melee or a ranged assassin Assassin is a great thing to have in a party, or as the main rogue trader, but you need to make sure to support your Assassin with other companions. I would give spot number 4 to the Vanguard, because you always need one tank, Vanguard is a buffer, okay, he protects all allies, he soaks up damage like crazy, late, late game it's gonna be potato damage on him basically with huge deflection, with huge armor, plus the parry and everything that goes with it, Vanguard is basically indestructible, low damage output, but indestructible. After the Vanguard we got Bounty Hunter and Arch Militant left. I would take Bounty Hunter for the 5th spot and the last spot would go to the Arch Militant. As you can see, I'm not putting Soldier and Arch Militant as the most OP class, but as the weakest class in the game, because they are highly dependent both on the companions and on the team that surrounds them. They're not as good on their own. By far and without discussion, Grand Strategist is the best second tier archetype in the game. What is the great thing and why now I say how Officer and Operative are the most OP? Both of them can become a Grand Strategist. You can always play first and that's the most OP thing that you can play in a game. I gave multiple builds for a lot of different archetypes and what not. People ask me this question, now I'm responding to it. Officer, Operative, Grand Strategist, Master Tactician, then everything else. Very simple. What about companions now? Who is the most OP companion in the game? It would be Cassia, by far. Okay, Cassia covers every single thing in a game that exists. Now, she's an officer that can become a Grand Strategist, hence she's always gonna play first. You don't take Grand Strategist and Officer abilities, you take Navigator abilities. Navigator abilities have AoE damage, crowd control, single target damage, single and AoE buffs, AoE and single target debuffs. Cassia has everything. 
Cassia is the most OP and the most useful companion in the game. After Cassia, it would be Cog for Brains, Know It All, Pascal. If you play Pascal as a grand strategist, when he always going to play first, okay, he can nuke down tankier enemies, he can nuke down bosses, he can debuff them, he can deal AoE damage, he can soak up damage, and he's there so you can succeed in all skill checks. Pascal would be number two. Number three would be Idira. If you play Idira as an operative grand strategist, Psyker, aggressive Psyker, damage dealing Psyker, Idira can output hilarious amount of damage and she can play multiple times per round as a Psyker. She's got AoE spells, AoE damage spells, single target damage spells, she's got buffs and she also has debuffs. She is basically a slightly weaker version of Cassia. Spot number four goes to Jaya Heidari, an officer, master tactician, where you can spam ultis as much as you like when you have Jaya Heidari in your team. Best to be played as a master tactician, of course, if you want to accumulate ulti and help all allies around you. She is mainly a buffer. Spot number five goes to Argenta, single target, but the most important thing, burst damage with a heavy bolter, or you can go with AoE damage, area damage, if you play with a flamethrower. It is your choice how you want to play Argenta. Argenta is basically useless on her own, without Cassia, without your main rogue trader, and, of course, without Jaya Heidari. And that's why I'm only giving her spot number 5. Spot number 6 goes to Iliet Lenaevis. Sniper! When you play her as a bounty hunter, she can deal a lot of damage on a 6 screens distance. Okay, and she can shoot multiple times in a row with hilarious crits. And she can shoot again once she kills an enemy. Classic aggressive sniper. She can also mark praise and she can produce a lot of passive buffs to her allies with all of those marked units. Once Iliad becomes an exemplar, she's probably the highest damage output among all of your companions in the game. Spot number 7 goes to Abelard. Abelard takes forever to scale. Once he scales and once you acquire Vanguard Exemplar on Abelard, he'll start receiving potato or better to say zero damage. So useful beyond Act 3. Not so good before Act 3. Abelard is basically a punch bag. He's there to soak up damage and defend allies. Spot number 8 goes to Heinrichs van Kellox. A biomancer, assassin, can give extra action points to allies, he can hurt enemies, he can burst out enemies, but he's also for some reason extremely squishy and very, very hard to build the right way. You're always gonna suffer as Heinrich. If you opt in for a Psyker, you are losing damage. If you opt in for damage, then you're losing Psyker abilities. If you opt in for dodge, you're gonna lose on damage, and so on and so forth. Heinrichs needs to get close to the enemies, okay, it's how I'll get imagine for you to play Heinrichs as a warrior assassin, while Abelard as a warrior vanguard. It's how they were created. Now, can you mix something up? Yes, you can, but in the state that the game gives them to you, that's how it is. Heinrichs spot number eight on spot number nine we got the squishiest space marine or better to say space wolf in the coronus expanse wolfar he occupies four tiles he's completely useless he misses his targets he doesn't know how to hit anyone with melee or with ranged he can soak up damage because he has that auto revival after a round he could prove useful okay when he drops down so he delays enemies as a boulder once he's dead on a map, but that's about it. Ulfar is just straight up bad. Probably the worst space marine in the 40k video gaming history. And there is only one worse thing than Ulfar, and it would be Marajai. 
I guess during the patches, okay, they're gonna fix both Ulfar and Marajai, make them more OP, give them more specific items, more specific spells, specific homeworlds and whatnot right now, currently, as it is. By the end of January, today is 26th of 2024. Ulfar and Marajai, I don't know who's worse. Uh, if I have to pick, it's Marajai as the worst companion, probably. But you should just avoid them un until they receive some fixes. Now, it's the complete opposite for the lore, okay? And for the voice acting, Ulfar and Marajai are absolutely great to have for the story parts of the game. But during combat, they are just way too weak. So, I answered two most famous questions. The most OP rogue trader and the most OP companion. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any problems with the game, you can always check my guides for all companions, for all of those rogue trader archetypes, subclasses and whatnot. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching.